So how do you create pricing for a brand new SaaS product? So going from zero to, let's say, one million in recurring revenue. So this is what I call the hustle phase. And it's called the hustle phase because you will have to explore more, make more errors and do sort of more weird stuff at this phase than at any other phase, which is fine because just like every other part of the business, you're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work. So in that sense, being not super committed to one thing might actually be right for you here. But with that said, I have a four step process, which is sort of just like the very simple things that you need to go through to arrive at a pricing model that you can then start in the market with. Okay, so step one is to not do pricing, but do packaging. So you figure out, well, what is actually for sale when I speak to customers? Is it just the solution or is it like a basic and advanced version? Is there like some add on that we can like do or not do from a functionality perspective? Are we going to charge for onboarding? Like whatever it is, just figure those things out first. So you're like, okay, this is what we're going to sell. This is like what are called the choice architecture, like the different decisions the customer has to make to sort of figure out what it is that they're going to buy from us, right? We'll, we'll help them and we'll do these things, but overall that's what's for sale. Okay. That's step one. Step two is looking at different prospective customers, figuring out what they would buy off your packaging. Say, oh, this customer is really big, so they would probably buy all of it. Or this customer is really small, so they might only want to buy the basic version, whatever. And then come to some sort of a conclusion of what you think overall they would be willing to pay. And you can, you can, you can use different sort of ways to arrive at a number. You can say, well, if, if you're in an established category, you can look at what the competitors are doing. Um, and you can decide if you want to be premium or if you want to be, be cheap uh, compared to. If you're in something new, you can look at whatever their total cost of ownership currently is or other comparable solutions or whatever it is that you're substituting and so forth. So you might also, to some degree, if you're selling something into a very specific ICP and budget, let's say you're selling something into HR in their, like say training category, then maybe they have a specific budget for this. And you might also consider their affordability and so forth. So whatever it is, come up with a number and saying, I think it could be X or it could be $50,000, whatever it is for this type of customer. And then you look at the customer in step three and say, how do I work backwards from that number to a pricing model? So let's say you say, okay, this large account that I thought would be willing to pay $50,000 for my thing. How many of different things do they have? How many users would they have on the solution? How many, whatever API calls would they use? How many, everything else that is involved in your solution would they potentially use or consume or have. And then you, let's say it's users. Then you say, okay, so they would probably have something like a hundred users, right? That is sort of, maybe you're selling into the sales team and they have a hundred sales reps, right? Or maybe something else. And then you say, okay, so that means that I needed to arrive at $50,000. So if it is hundred users, I just divide that by a hundred. So it's going to be $500 per user per year. Okay. That's the model. And if you're then saying, and then you do the same for the smaller account and say, okay, so they have whatever, 20 users. And then you sort of figure out maybe sort of that's what's getting the price point there. Maybe the, the, the users have to be more expensive for the smaller account. Maybe it has to be the same. You can work a little bit with, with trying to adding some flat fees. So you're saying, oh, maybe 500 users is too much. So maybe we want to add like whatever, 20K at the bottom. And then it's just going to be 300 per user for the large account, something like this but you can, you can create pretty simple math that gets you to the number pretty quickly. And that's the point. Like don't overthink this. Then you take what you have, which is you have a packaging, like something you have to sell, and then you have an overall price level, and then you have a price model, like a way that you arrived at the price level. And then you run a, and you skip the validation. You just run a sales test. You just go to customers and say, Hey, I have something. Do you want to buy it? If you're, let's say more advanced and you already have, let's say half a million, a million in business, and maybe you are, you know, what you have does don't work. You go to the same steps, you package, you figure out a price level, you figure out a pricing model, and then you can run some interviews and validate. 
But if you're at zero and you just want to get started, don't waste time with validation. Your sales is your validation. So you just take the proposition you have, the packaging, what you have for sale with the price and the way you arrive at the price is, hey, it's going to be 20K plus 300 per user. I want to sell you all your 100, 200 users, how many of you they had. And then do, uh, do we have a deal? Like, and then you're going to get a million no's, but you're going to get one yes eventually, and then you're going to get another yes and so forth. And then if someone comes along and say, hey, uh, I like the software, I like the packaging, I don't like the producer part, how about I just pay you per whatever, days of sunshine? Then you say, yes, let's work with that. And then you create another model for this customer and a third model for another customer, and you do whatever it takes to get to a million. Because again, the hustle phase is about learning. It's just about closing business, getting reps or interactions with customers and figuring out what the preferences are. So you add that million, then can look back on the whatever 20 different models you had with 20 different customers and say, okay, so what seems to work the best? What was the most acceptable way across these customers to pay? What generated sort of the least resistance in negotiations? What tended to generate the best or most favorable comparisons to other economics, like which model was more like reference to the value it could generate as opposed to like competitors or something like that. And then you pick that model and that's what you then run from 1 million to 10 or 25 with. So you can afford a lot of what I call, yeah, hustle or commercial debt. So different models, different prices, different discounts, different deals with customers as you get started in order to then have, let's say, paid off your ignorance debt, having learned as much as you need to learn so that really when you have like the tiny start of a business at a, at a million a year, then you can really create a model that you know you can fire up and crank a sales engine on and take with express speed from one to 10 and beyond without having to do special deals and so forth and keep learning and iterating. Not that you shouldn't keep learning and iterating, but you shouldn't create a hundred different deals with a hundred different enterprise customers as you go from one to 10 and 20 million. That's probably wrong because you're going to end up slowing down yourself far too much before you're at the end of what you could have been if you if you don't get a little bit more into a tighter framework at this point. So pay off that ignorance debt with the hustle phase at the beginning. Just worry about packaging first, position the overall price levels, come up with a model that generates those relatively well and just test it in sales and then, you know, test something new if that's what they want. So that's the short recipe from like zero to one um, on the pricing basis. So good luck with it. Hey there. So I create these videos for free so that you can take your great SaaS product and turn it into a great SaaS business. So if you like the video and you got value from it, you should of course subscribe to the channel and also tell a friend. So write someone and say, hey, you know, you're in SaaS. This guy talks about SaaS. Maybe there's something in there for you. So that is the only way that this channel actually grows or these videos gets around. And this is sort of how I try to provide value to everyone. I have a network of clients that I have and I get most of my business from referrals only. So the reason I make the videos and write the books and so forth is actually to just provide value to everyone else because I can only be in one place at a time. So my hope with all these videos is just to do more good in the world and if you tell a friend or you share, you can help me do that. So thank you.